Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Hey, uh, this is one of the larger G-Shock watches you can buy, a range man here. Let's go in depth on this one. All right, the watch I want to talk about today is the Rangeman GW9400 G-Shock watch. It's kind of a large case here, uh, you know, the classic G-Shock attributes, uh, that classic, uh, you know, shock resistance and water resistant to 20 bars or 200 meters. And uh, this one has 11 modes on it. It has the triple sensor from Casio, so that's a built-in compass, thermometer, and barometer. And that barometer is also used to uh, take altitude measurements as well. So lots of stuff you can do with this tough watch. Uh, now, one of the things I really like that I have on this uh, and some other Casio watches is the tough solar feature. That means built into the face of this watch, there's a solar cell. And that provides enough electricity from that solar cell to keep the battery supply charged up on this watch and with normal exposure to regular lighting in your everyday life you should have plenty of power to keep this battery charged up right here there's a little indicator low medium and high to tell you how well that battery is charged up this one uh, you know i think it was about medium when i got it because it had been in a box for who knows how long before i bought it but once i got up to high it's uh, remained on high for quite a while and I couldn't be more happy with uh, other watches I already have that use tough solar. So it, it's just great. You can go for years and years and years and never have to worry about a battery change on one of these tough solar watches. Also, you don't have to worry about setting the time. You can set the time zone, but after that, if you're within range of one of the worldwide uh, atomic time transmitters, well, then, then this will be good for you. It's a multiband six feature that Casio does. So actually there are six atomic time transmitters in different parts of the world. And this will be programmed to pick up the time from any of those six transmitters as long as it's within range. Now, one of them is in China. There are two in Japan. One, of course, in the United States, WWVB, and there's one in uh, Germany and also in the UK. So if you are within range of those transmitters, then this watch will uh, check itself every day to make sure that it's correct and reset itself uh, to within fractions of a second every day. If you can't pick up, uh, you know, the multiband six atomic time reception on this watch because, you know, there's just interference where you are or your part of the world isn't close enough to one of those transmitters, then this watch will run like a regular quartz watch and it will uh, be within 15 seconds a month accuracy. So not bad at all there. Now, as with a lot of Casio watches, this one is available in a few different color combinations. And also you've got the negative LCD display instead of this positive LCD display, uh, depending on what you want to do there. I tend to prefer the positive LCD display. So I got this watch and, uh, and I'll try it out. Uh, those watches, the other versions of it, they all use the same module 3410. That's Casio's module. And you can download the, the instructions from their website if it didn't come with the watch, but boy, they should come with the watch. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to walk you through all the, all the functions and features and setup here. So maybe you won't even have to refer to the instructions after you watch my video. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> all right. There are officially 11 modes on this watch. 11. So of course the, the, the main one here, just the timekeeping mode. And uh, here it's showing you, of course, the day of the week, uh, the month and date and the local time for the local time zone that I've already selected. Uh, right now it's in the 12 hour mode. So it has a little P for PM. Uh, if it's AM, it doesn't have an indication there. And of course, if it's the 24 hour mode, it just has the, uh, the six digits there with no AM or PM indicator. Uh, another thing you'll notice here is that you've got kind of an animated, uh, animated round item there, part of the LCD. And it's kind of like slices of a pie, if you will, that, uh, appear and disappear in the regular timekeeping mode over the course of 10 seconds. They all come on, they all go off, and that just keeps repeating and that does other things in different modes, but that's what it looks like in the regular timekeeping mode. I'll press this button down here on the lower left side to change modes. And the next mode is my world time mode. So you can select any time zone you want. Uh, in this case, the default is UTC or Greenwich time. But if I push this button here on the lower right side, then it's as though I'm scrolling ahead on the map and selecting a different time zone. Or if I go the other way with this other button, that's what I can do there. 
But I'm going to go ahead and set that back to uh, UTC or Greenwich time just because eh, I just like to have that as my default there. Okay, the next mode happens to be the stopwatch mode. And I left this running for several days because uh, this is unique uh, with all the watches I have. This is a 1000 hour stopwatch. So right now it's been running for 267 hours and 21 minutes <laughs> right there. And of course, when I'm in this other mode, it's still showing me the local time right here on this line. But wow, up to a thousand hours that, you know, that's 41 days plus 16 hours. So if you need to time anything that long, this watch has you covered. Uh, and you can see that little animated uh, circle is reacting every second. Those, those little pieces are appearing and disappearing while the stopwatch is running. I can stop the stopwatch right here, or this button up here will give me the split time. Okay, if I stop the watch and then press that button, it'll reset it, but I'm gonna keep it going because I wanna see, I wanna see it turn over <laughs> a thousand hours here one of these days. All right, next mode, here is the countdown timer mode. And this is a 24 hour countdown timer. Here's the local time still. And here you can select either, uh, you know, your hours and your minutes right there. And if I push this button, it prompts me to set that. I can set it up to, you know, 24 hours. Actually, the way to make a true 24 hour countdown on this is to set this down so that it's showing all zeros on the countdown setting. And if it's in all zeros, then when you start it, that's going to be a true 24 hour countdown. And again, you see this little animated circle is doing something while it's counting down. And well, that's what you get there for the countdown timer. Okay, then alarms. Okay, this has four alarms plus a fifth alarm that is a snooze alarm. So here they are, alarm one, two, three, four, and five. That's the snooze alarm. So they're gonna go off for about 10 seconds every day if they're turned on. The snooze alarm will actually go off for 10 seconds and then it'll go five minutes later, it'll go another 10 seconds and five minutes after that, it'll go another 10 seconds up to seven times. Uh, so the last time it goes will be 30 minutes after the first time it goes if you have that turned on. And the way to turn this on is press and hold this button on the upper right side. So just like that. Or if I want to change the setting, I press and hold the other button on the upper left side. And then I can adjust the hours simply right there and the minutes simply right there. So, you know, that's, that's pretty straightforward, pretty standard as far as uh, alarms on watches go. Uh, of course, you have the, the hourly uh, signal that you can have a beep every hour, turn that on or off. And you may have noticed that down here, it's going to show you whether your alarms or your hourly signals are, are set to go. So if any alarm is on, then this is going to show up here if the hourly signal is set to go. And if one of your alarms that's on happens to be the snooze alarm, then that, that's all going to show up right down here uh, on the bottom part of the main display. So even if I switch modes here, it's still showing me that, uh, those things are set to go. All right. So this next mode is actually a sunrise and sunset indicator. Now this is interesting because, uh, it by default is set to show the sunrise and sunset time at the city that you've set as your home time city. So in this case, it's, it's the Denver time zone, but I'm actually uh, quite a ways to the west of the, the Denver, the city of Denver, even though I'm in the same time zone. So by default, this maybe is showing me the, uh, you know, the, the sunrise and sunset in Denver, but uh, there's a way to adjust this uh, and make it more precise to, to your location. And I'll show you that in the setup screens in just a moment. Also, when you're in this mode, you may notice that up here, it's kind of hard to see, kind of subtle because these lines are so small, but where, where this is indicating 436 for a sunset time, it's kind of showing up there within sort of a 24 hour, uh, 24 hour display there. And then 707 is, is kind of uh, indicated by another little line there. And there's another little line in here that's going to show you the current, the current time. So uh, it's a little hard to see in this particular view here but this is doing something in the sunrise and sunset uh, mode. Uh, to me, this is a little bit backwards. The sunrise is down here and the sunset is there. Normally I expect, you know, sunrise happens first. So I would want it to be on this line and sunset happens later. That would be on this line. But as long as you get used to it, uh, that's sunrise, that's sunset. And another thing about this mode is uh, now that's showing me today's date, but if I wanted to scroll ahead and check uh, what's the sunrise and sunset on another date, I can scroll ahead with this button 
on the bottom right. And now it's showing me, you know, the sunrise sunset for one month from now. Okay. Or I can of course go backwards on this and uh, figure out when the sunrise and sunset will be basically, you know, any date you choose, you can, you can preview those times. Okay. Uh, now this is a, there's a way to store information from the compass, the altimeter and uh, the barometer. And this is the screen where you bring up those records to show, you know, what you saved. So this is showing me that at 8:20 uh, on December 6th, this figure was saved. This is an altitude reading. And then again, it's going to show me some of the other things that have been saved. I can scroll through those also a maximum uh, value for the altimeter and a minimum value. And then uh, this is tracking your ascent and descent. So you can use this while you're hiking or climbing or mountain biking or whatever you do. There are ways to store those figures and recall them. So that's, that's the screen where that happens. Okay. Next is, this is where you access the radio control information. So that multiband six I was talking about right here, it's telling me that the last time it was able to receive and process that atomic time data was, uh, that's yesterday's date at three minutes past, uh, past midnight. So that's what it's telling me. And also, uh, well, this will try to receive automatically every night starting at midnight. And if it's successful after somewhere between two and 10 minutes, then it won't try again until the next night, again, starting at midnight. But if it is not successful, it's going to try again every hour up to six times. So that's the automatic reception of multiband six time and date information. Or from this screen here, if I wanted to, I could manually initiate a, a atomic time reception right here. All I do is hold down this button here. But one thing to keep in mind is that uh, if you do have a countdown timer running, then the, the multiband six reception will not initialize while the countdown timer is running. So I, I went ahead and stopped that. And now I'm going to try just holding this button down. It's prompting me to keep holding. And now this is going to start trying to receive and interpret that atomic time data. And, um, well, it takes a few minutes to, to get going. Now, in this case, uh, I have some video gear and some stuff going, you know, happening here in my house. So there might be some radio reception. And also this isn't maybe the ideal time of day. This works better overnight. So, um, okay. It's starting to try to receive L1 or level one reception is, uh, kind of the weakest that you can get. You wanted to get up to L3 or level three reception, uh, before it's really going to be reliably receiving that atomic time information. And well, this is telling me, okay, too much interference right now. It gave me an error. It's not going to try right now, but maybe later on after I turn off my gear, I can try that atomic time reception. But again, I showed you how to get into that if you want to. All right, now we're back to the regular home screen on this one. So let me just show you quickly, if you wanted to, uh, to set up this watch, if, if you just barely got it out of the box, here's what you do from the regular timekeeping mode here, press and hold this button here on the upper left. And the first thing it's going to prompt you to do is set your home time zone. In this case, I've already set it to the Denver time zone, but here you can scroll uh, as though you're going eastward on the map when you push this button on the lower right side or uh, go back the other way by pushing this button up here. I'm going to put it back to the Denver time zone. And there I go for that. Next, I push the mode button again. And this is where it's prompting me uh, as regarding daylight saving time. So daylight saving time can be automatically displayed or I can have it always be off or always be on. And that's where I make my selection right there. Next is the 12 hour or 24 hour mode that you can have on the display by selecting right there. Uh, now this is where you can manually set the time and date. So if I wanted to, I could manually set those seconds, uh, you know, hours, minutes, the year, the month, and the date. But keep in mind that if I manually set that, it's going to reset to whatever the atomic time information is that it receives the next time that that happens. So uh, you could disable the atomic time reception if you wanted to, or you could leave it on as I do. But uh, again, when you, when you set this manually, it will probably be replaced 
at some point. Now, uh, this refers to, this has a little, it says key and has a little musical note there. This refers to, uh, well, when you press the button to change modes or start and stop a stopwatch or a timer, uh, almost every time you press a button on this watch, you're going to hear a little beep, but you can mute that by selecting mute right here. So uh, it's still going to, even if it's in mute, you're going to have a sound, it's going to make a sound when, uh, when it does one of the, one of the alarms or when a countdown timer ends, but it's just not going to beep as often when you put this in mute, especially if you're going to try to be discreet, you're going to, you know, you're in the middle of a meeting and you want to start a stopwatch and you don't want everyone to hear your watch beeping as you're changing modes. This would be where you mute that, but I'm going to put it back in uh, non mute mode at the moment. All right, it has a backlight here, and this is the button for the backlight right here. Big, big, nice button right on the front of it. And uh, well, with this, you can select whether the light's going to stay on for three seconds or one and a half seconds. So you have that selection you can do right here. I'm going to leave it on three. Usually you might want to uh, leave it on a shorter duration to save battery power, but since this is rechargeable, I'll leave it on a long duration. Next is power saving mode. You can have that on or off. When it's off, then, uh, well, nothing's going to happen. There's no power save on this. But when power save is turned on, here's what happens. When you take the watch off at night and, you, and you're in the dark and it's past 10 p.m., then after about an hour, the display will go blank on this to save power. You can get it out of that sleep uh, mode when it's, when it's in power save. You can make it come back to life by simply uh, turning on the lights and getting it in a well-lit area or you can press any button and that will bring the display back to life. Or you can move this because it does have a little motion sensor inside of it for an automatic light. So if you're using power save, pick up the watch, it's blank, just give it a wiggle <laughs> or press some buttons and it'll come back to life. Okay, now here is where you can select uh, metric or non-metric units. And so what you do, it's, right there it's showing that's either Celsius or Fahrenheit. That's feet or meters, and this is for the, uh, for the barometer, either inches of mercury or hectopascals. So what you do to change those is use the buttons on the side of the watch to make those selections. Now this top button happens to be for Celsius or Fahrenheit. This middle button will select either uh, the inches of mercury or hectopascals, and this bottom button to select meters or feet for your metric or non-metric readings on the watch. Okay, next, press, and here is, uh, well, we're back to, you know, setting the city. But I'm gonna show you another thing here. Let's say you want to fine tune the setting for uh, the sunrise and sunset indicator. So I'm gonna show you something here really quick. I'm gonna set the city back to, say, Los Angeles, okay? So Los Angeles, the home city now, and it's showing me, I just pressed this button up here, it's showing me that the latitude is uh, north, 31.4 degrees. And if I push this button down here, it's showing me the longitude is west, 118.2 degrees. So if I wanted to say, instead of showing the sunrise and sunset in Los Angeles, let's say I wanted to change that to Seattle. So I go up here and I change the latitude. And by using this button up here, I can uh, lower that or by doing it here, I can increase that. So for Seattle, I'd have to be, I think it's like 46 point something. So here's where I can make that adjustment. Okay, going up here to Seattle. And then if I wanted to, I could uh, change this as well, go farther, that's going farther east, and that's going farther west. And so if I put in the correct coordinates for this, then when I go back here to the, uh, sunrise and sunset, it's going to give me a more correct reading for, say, Seattle or somewhere that's not Los Angeles, but might still be in the same time zone. So that's kind of a nice feature right there. And incidentally, as you're moving up uh, to, to look ahead on the uh, future dates or to go back to the past dates to check on the sunrise and sunset times, uh, this is not going to make an adjustment for daylight saving time. It's going to show you the sunrise and sunset times according to whatever the watch is doing right now. So right here, I'm looking ahead to April when we will be in daylight saving time, but this is still showing me the sunrise and sunset data as though we were not in daylight saving time. So something to keep in mind as you're scrolling around too much. 
Also, I should note that when I'm in the world time mode, if I go here to say London, okay, and if London has daylight saving time or summer time, well, by default, it's not going to show that here in this setting. But what I can do to, uh, to make it show daylight saving time for the time zone I've selected there is just press and hold this button on the upper left for a moment. And there it prompted me. And so now that's gonna show DST for that particular time zone if I want to, and I can take it back off by holding that again. So something you can do in case one of these world time uh, cities that you selected is doing summertime or daylight saving time. Now a moment ago I told you that you can disable the, uh, the automatic time reception if you want to. The way you do that is you change modes here until you get into this one that's uh, marked RC. So it, when you're in this mode right here, if you press and hold this setting button up here on the upper left side, then there you go. Uh, the automatic time reception can be on or off. That's how you make that adjustment. So I'm gonna leave that on because you know, my, I like to use that. Now, another thing is when you're in this regular timekeeping mode here, you can go directly to the stopwatch by pressing this button on the lower right side. Um, I don't know exactly why that's the only, you know, kind of quick access feature there uh, besides the triple sensor stuff, but just something to keep in mind. If you're in timekeeping mode, uh, just like that, just want to go to the stopwatch for some reason, there you go. By the way, as you're scrolling around to different modes on this watch, if you, uh, if you wanted to just go directly back to the home, uh, you know, regular timekeeping mode, what you can do is just press and hold this mode button for just a couple of seconds. And there, it's gonna go directly back so you don't have to necessarily scroll through every mode. Now, earlier I showed you that up here, it was showing the day of the week and uh, the date and the time. But if I push this button here, the other thing I can have in that top part of the display is a graphical representation of the barometric pressure changes. So this is showing me that the, the pressure has been getting lower over the past several hours. And that, uh, well, that makes sense because we are expecting a storm later tonight. So as you look at that little graphical representation, you can see that either the pressure is holding steady or it's going up or it's going down or it's going all over the place. That's a nice little feature that you have there in the regular timekeeping mode if you choose to have that little pressure graph. As far as the triple sensor uh, features go, well, this is the button right here to access those readings. So if I push it once, uh, it beeped three times, showing me that, well, now it's going to get into the barometric setting. And right there, it's showing me the barometric pressure. Up there, it's showing me that graph. And there, it's showing me, uh, well, that's showing me the temperature right there. And I should note that when you're using this for a thermometer, it is affected by your body temperature. So as I've been handling this watch for the last little while making this video, uh, it's showing it's 83.4 degrees Fahrenheit here, which is not quite accurate. It's not that hot in this room, but because I've been handling it, it's been affected by my, my body heat. So if you want an accurate reading, just be aware that you might have to take the watch off, leave it, uh, leave it on the counter, leave it wherever you want to take the, the temperature reading, leave it there for five or 10 minutes to get a true reading for that spot. But this is where you see, again, temperature and the barometric pressure. Now, straight out of the box, this might not show you the correct barometric pressure. So you can adjust that. And the way you do that is hold this button here on, uh, on the upper left. This is where, again, you can, now you can fine tune the temperature reading if you think that's wrong and you can make it go up or down with these buttons. In Fahrenheit, uh, it reads uh, in, in uh, two-tenths of a degree increments, and in Celsius, it's one-tenth of a degree in increments on there. So you can, you can change that if you think that the, uh, the internal thermometer is off. It's supposed to be accurate to within two degrees Celsius, which is 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can make that adjustment if you want. You can also set it back to factory defaults if you're not sure you got it in the right place. So that's something you can do there. And then if I push this here, then I can also fine tune the barometric pressure reading. So uh, if you have a weather instrument that you trust, you can set this so it agrees with that weather instrument. Or, you know, you can also uh, find out the current weather conditions at the nearest airport. They always have to be very careful about reporting barometric pressure uh, accurately to the pilots. So yeah, find the, find the nearest 
reliable barometric pressure uh, weather instrument around and you can just set this to correspond to your location and uh, that, that fine tuning is available for those. All right, so uh, one thing you can do while you're in this mode is you can save the information that's on this screen and to do that just hold this button here on the upper right side, hold that for just a moment and it prompts you to hold it long enough and once you've done that your information is saved. So when I go back to the uh, recall mode here, that is one of the things that is now going to be saved as I scroll through these. Uh, so it's going to show me you know, the latest one that I've saved on there. Now if I return to timekeeping mode and I push this uh, triple sensor button again, uh, I go back to again the barometer setting, but if I push it now, I can go to the uh, altimeter setting. So with the altimeter setting, again, this might not show the right uh, altitude straight out of the box, but if you want to, you hold this button down here and you can fine tune that to uh, you know a reliable setting for the altitude where you are. It's a barometric altimeter. So as the barometric pressure changes because of weather, uh, then this is not necessarily going to show you the same altitude at the same location day after day. So if you are going to rely on this, then um, you should reset this before you go for your hike or before you go climbing or whatever you're going to do with this watch. You should take uh, a, a known reading of whatever the altitude is where you are and set this to that altitude before you venture out. And uh, not that hard, but, that, but that's something you can do there. And then this is kind of a bar graph to show you changes in altitude. So that might show, you know, a few notches up or down depending on how your altitude change has been. But another thing you can show in this little portion of the display, if you push this button here on the upper left side, is some sort of differential. So since I've been resetting the, uh, you know, the default value here for the altimeter, kind of calibrating that, it's showing me that uh, it's, it's 75 feet below where I started. Um, so this is kind of a nice feature when you're actually doing your hiking or biking or whatever you, you think you want to track your altitude changes. Um, you can use that, that little window right there. And in order to reset that, let's say I wanted to start right now, all I do is tap this button on the lower right side in this mode and it takes a moment to, to reset. And now it's showing, you know, plus or minus zero. And so, you know, this is where as you're going along, you can see if you've been descending or going up on your, your movement there. And uh, this will take a reading, well, every five seconds or every two minutes. And you can select that duration right here by pressing and holding this. Um, first of all, this is where you could recalibrate your, your altitude, your current altitude, if you think it might be wrong. But if I push this button down here, then this is where I can change that interval to be taking a reading either every five seconds or every two minutes. And that'll be the reading that then shows up um, up here in this little window, my differential that's showing there. There are some other things having to do with uh, tracking your ascent and descent, but I'm not going to get into the weeds too far with, with all the nitty gritty details of that. But just keep in mind that there, there are a lot of great things you can do tracking your altitude as you go with this watch. But what I'll show you now is if I push this again, this is my compass mode. And for the most accurate uh, compass reading, you want to have this, uh, you know, horizontal to the ground. So right now that's horizontal to the ground. This is a little bit better for the camera to see things. But if I turn it this way, then this is going to show me it's a, you know, digital compass. It's giving me a, a heading that uh, from here straight up to the kind of the 12 o'clock position, I'm pointed at a, a, an angle of about 45 degrees from true north. And you may notice right there, this, this dial is actually showing me kind of the north, south, east, and west points on the compass. And the, the north one is a little bit thicker. So if I turn this to where I think it's pointing more toward true north, you can see that this indicator in this dial is also pointed straight up kind of the, to the 12 o'clock position. So as you're, uh, as you're moving around, you know, you can see uh, again your digital heading down there and, and it times out after about a minute. So let me go back into that. Uh, so yeah, you can see your, your digital readout of your heading there and there it's going to show you whether that's east, east, northeast, you know, and you know, that's going to 
display north north northwest whatever and then again in in there it's going to show you kind of a little miniature lcd compass as you go so and again you can save your your settings by holding that so i'm not going to go into all the details on how to set the declination and uh, calibrate the compass but what i will show you is up here where it's showing you uh the direction you know east or if i turn it it's going to say northeast or you know those those things if you want to you can have that save uh, save a heading for you so right now it's showing that it's a uh, 99 or 100 degrees if i'm kind of straight up this direction here so if i want to save this uh this number here i push this button on the lower right side and then that saves that heading for me so as i'm moving it around it's still going to show me you know that 99 degrees is, is the bearing that i'm trying to trying to shoot for and I can update that as I go. So that might be a little helpful as you're hiking around and trying to, you know, get around the wilderness. Or I can of course put it back by pressing that button to where it's going to give me, you know, the alphabet letters there to show me the direction I'm pointing. Now, things to keep in mind when you're using this watch. Uh, again, it's a barometric altimeter, so it's relying on air pressure changes to show you the altitude. That might not seem as accurate as, say, like a GPS receiver, but actually barometric altimeters have been used in aviation for many, many years already. So again, um, you know, pilots will check in with the airport where they're where they wanted to take off or land and find out what the barometric pressure is there, and they will calibrate the barometric altimeters in their airplanes, and that seems to have worked pretty well for pilots for a long, long time already. And this is using the same principle to track your uh, your altitude. And of course, the, the compass is a magnetic compass, so it's going to be pointing to magnetic north. Unlike a GPS that may be pointing to true north, magnetic north isn't necessarily in the same place. So there's a way that you can enter the offset uh, in here, depending on where you are. And that's easy to look up, and maybe you'll find it on, on maps, or uh, you can just look it up online to find out what is the offset between um, true north and magnetic north where you are. And you can set that in here and get the more accurate reading. And you can calibrate uh, this compass, this magnetic compass, so that you'll get uh, you know pretty good results as you're out there, out and about using it. Now, this is kind of one of the larger watches that I have. I, I like the back there. It's nice, uh, nice machined look on the back of the watch. It says Range Man. Looks like what is that? A cat or a dragon? <laughs> Uh, lots of lots of neat little graphics on the back there. Um, it has you know a pretty a pretty stiff watch band. It's comfortable enough, but you know it's a nice resin watch band with again kind of the two two double buckle idea here on the watch band. And this is kind of a nice uh, almost a, kind of a heavy piece of metal there to help uh, you know put the end of the watch band through there when you're wearing it. It's uh, it's got these nice big buttons, very easy to use. And let's put it on the scale really quick. It weighs in at, uh, what is that, 91 grams. So, you know, that's one of the heavier watches. Not too bad, though. You get used to it. It's fine. Uh, as opposed to, say, one of these, the 65 grams for a simpler G-Shock watch that you can get. So, you know, those are the specs. Other important specs, as I said, if you're not getting your multiband 6 atomic time reception, it will be accurate to within 15 seconds per month as a normal quartz watch. The, uh, the range of the thermometer is uh, from minus 10 to 60 degrees positive Celsius. So for Fahrenheit, this will give you a reading for anywhere from 14 above zero to 140 degrees above zero for Fahrenheit. Uh, again, accuracy to within two degrees Celsius on there. And the compass is said to be accurate to within 10 degrees and uh, it takes a reading every few seconds. So not bad at all. Now I mentioned that this button here is the button for the backlight, and I'll show you how that looks in just a moment, but it also allows you to turn on an automatic backlight uh, sensor. So if I hold this down and hold it for a few seconds, then uh, right there you could see maybe uh, the, the, the letters LT appeared in the display, and that refers to the automatic backlight being active. So basically what that does is when you turn this watch up towards yourself as though you're looking at it, there's a switch inside that senses that that's the position of the watch and it automatically turns on the backlight. Let's take a look at what that backlight looks like. All right, so if I just tilt that up towards myself, there you go. It's, it's uh, compared to some of the other backlights I have on some of my other watches, it uh, seems to be a little more white and a little more bright. So uh, it is a, you know, pretty impressive little backlight. 
that comes on automatically when you have it set this way. So there you go. Thanks for watching yet another episode of The Good Timekeeping Show. And yes, I do have plans for more episodes, so please stay tuned.